Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. I'm Shan Vanderleek, here with my friend and co-host Ananga Sevier. Last week, we came together and talked about how anxiety can hijack our minds and cause us distress by focusing in on anything we're worried about and increasing our fear by running a narrative of everything that might be wrong. And this week, we're looking at how this can happen with our anxiety over health and We'll be sharing some practices from Qigong and EFT tapping to help calm anxiety and send relaxed healing intentions to all of your areas of concern. Welcome back, Ananga. Hey, Shen. So let's dive in. Health anxiety is such a big issue with our listeners, with this co-host on occasion, and anything that we can offer to help quell that is a good thing. The anxious mind will look for what's wrong in our body and it will find something inevitably. And then it magnifies it, it zooms in, it becomes hypervigilant and it keeps going back to check and worry, check and worry. Sometimes we find an ache or a pain or something we don't think feels quite right. And if we have a certain type of anxiety, we tend to get a bit investigative. We might poke it around a bit and then you've got some increased discomfort there and then the mind makes this spiraling loop of anxiety where it keeps going back to check over and over again and it's a really difficult preoccupying kind of anxiety so we need to be very gentle and compassionate and there are ways of working with this where we can feel much more settled and in control yes and i've just been in this this week so what we're talking about really does work and to be on the other side of it and just like, oh, thank goodness for the resources. Thank goodness for you, Ananga. Thank goodness for the, the ability to figure some things out and, and then allow yourself to exhale and, and move on to the best of your ability. Well, let's talk about energy medicine. And you know, we talk about EFT tapping, which is energy medicine. It's the basis of EFT tapping. And it's why we talk about it as much as we do. It's so incredibly helpful and supportive. And I'll just share a tiny little story because I have to. On Monday, I was experiencing like pokey center of the chest pains that would, were kind of intermittent. And usually I know what that is. It's, you know, vata coming up and I'm just, and I'm fine. I have a glass of water. Uh, and try to distract myself and, and usually it goes away. Well, in this particular day, it went, it went on for a very long time. And the longer it went on, the more I wanted to poke and prod and figure it out and all that kind of good stuff. And so I started tapping and really getting some favorable results quite quickly, even though that w- it was still coming up. And then thankfully, later, I. I reached out to you and said, what is this? The fact that it's sticking around and then we got right to the heat and right to the vata coming up and the things that you can do like peppermint tea, which ding, 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 that is what helped. Drinking some peppermint tea cooled me down and stopped those sensations that can make you spiral into a a health anxiety episode. And so bringing that back around Uh, with the EFT tapping and the peppermint tea and a conversation with a good friend, I was able to get right on top of that. Whereas I I didn't have those resources, I probably would have suffered a hell of a lot more than I did. Yeah. I think, you know, in the West, we, if we're not careful, we can go to Google and different places and we tend to go to what might be wrong. Oh, I have this feeling in my body, what might be wrong. That's the Western way of dealing with it. And Some people are chill with that and some aren't and some are very anxious. And if you already have a leaning towards anxiety, then those things can be incredibly triggering for high anxiety. But in the East, everything's dealt with in a much more compassionate and gentle kind of leaning in where you look at a symptom or sensation in your body and think, what does it need? You know, what might be causing this? Am I stressed? How's my diet? How's the climate? How's my internal emotional climate? How's the external climate? What do I need to do? 
to support myself. And in that way, it, there's a beautiful leaning in of, of being a provider of your own medicine, not to say that we shouldn't mm-hmm. seek medical attention when we need it, because we absolutely should, and you and I are duty-bound to highlight that. But many cases with um, things in your kitchen cupboard, you can resolve. And I know that there's a, a man that you've been following for quite some time. His name is Chun Yi Lin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a Qigong master, gentle, compassionate teacher. Everything he says starts with, hello, my dear friends. He's so Aww. gentle. And I read his biography and he's an incredible energy master. He's a good person to look up. His teaching is called Spring Forest Qigong. So you can find him on, on YouTube. And then there's Daisy Lee is a woman that I really like to follow for women's health with Qigong. She's amazing also. And uh, yeah, for myself, if I have some strange sensations, something coming up in my body that I'm not comfortable with or it's an area causing concern, I'll go to, to Qigong because energy medicine teaches that a lot of what we feel is an energy blockage right. in the body. And very often if you can move that blockage with energy healing of any kind, Qigong, acupuncture, acupressure, shiatsu massage, all of these amazing techniques, EFT tapping also comes under that banner, as you already said, then very often you can restore yourself to to comfort quite quickly. Sure. And it feels proactive rather than reactive, which for me is completely the other side of the coin to anxiety. It is. It's a very calm and present and more comfortable state. And one of the things that um, Chunyi Lin has to say is when you meditate for your own health or healing, try not to focus on the pain, but feel how healthy you are instead of focusing on what's wrong. Because if you focus on what's wrong, you might call the pain back. Yeah. And that is such an incredibly smart teaching in itself is just to be like, all is well, I am well. and to know that there are actions that you can take while you're suffering to get past that, to move the energy. And having been uh, involved with shiatsu and EFT and Qigong, all three, what a big difference they have made in my life. And I know that they have in yours as well. Yeah, incredible difference. If you have an area, a sensitive area in your body that, you know, throws up pain, maybe it's a site of surgery or something like that. If you put your attention there, you can almost manifest discomfort. Mm -hmm. Many of us will have done this and will know this to be true. You can certainly manifest anxiety. And then think about that. We're looking at an area of our body manifesting anxiety, but then we're holding the anxiety in that place. We're sending anxiety there. Yes. Energy healing is all about where you send your intention, your attention, and what attention are you sending? So Chun Yi Lin has been a great teacher for me because he teaches all the time to decorate your face with a smile. Mm. And that just relaxes your face and your body and then to send loving intention to those places in your body that are causing you concern. And it's made a big difference. Whenever I do it, I feel the stagnation and the energy that's concerning me lifting from me. Mm-hmm. And the more we do it, then it becomes an anchor state. The more you do it, the more you drop into that practice. So again, the challenge is try it. The pit of mind will tell you it's not significant enough. It's ridiculous. It's not speaking to the problem. Try it. Proof of the pudding is in the eating. <laughs> What's the harm? Give it a go. Well, let's talk about how we can draw our mind away from fear and pain. I know there's a real sweet exercise that uh, we can share. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Yeah, so we've already discussed that Qigong helps move energy and clear blockages in the body. It helps release pain and anxiety, and it feels proactive to be doing something good for your health. And we're going to share a few simple ways that you can get started with that. One way is to draw your mind away, as Chun Yi Lin teaches, away from fear and pain. So our usual thing is we'll feel something, a tooth, an ache, or something, or something in our chest, and the mind locks right in on it, zooms right in, and, and we feel that anxiety rising. So one teaching is to scan your body with full attention and appreciation for the places that feel okay. 
and the places that don't cause you concern. So a good place to start with that, something that people tend not to worry about so much, is your hands. So to just bring your hand up in front of you and just flex your fingers, look at the amazing design of your hand, front and back. The back is so different. And the front of your hand, the way your fingers curl and bend, can do so many amazing things, cooking, healing, bathing your body, um, holding a pen, holding a paintbrush. So to just, with gratitude and fresh eyes, just look at your hand and all the things it can do. And then come up your arm, your forearm. Again, forearms aren't something we really tend to worry about too much. So have a look at your arm and twist it around and just send gratitude there. How useful is my arm? I was going to say how handy. (laughs) (laughs) How handy is my hand? How useful is my arm? And then, you know, your elbow, the way your elbow bends and moves and helps you carry and lift and do all kinds of stuff. Right, right. And then go to your feet, your feet that carry you and walk and move and dance and can do so many amazing things. Look at how they balance. Mm -hmm. Stand on one foot for a minute and shift your balance around and just see how much movement and flex is in your foot for adjusting, for holding you. Areas that don't cause us much concern, bring your attention there, bring gratitude there. Mm, Beautiful. And recently we had a listener who just started practicing Qigong send us a message to tell us how grateful they were to be practicing and how much it's helping them with their anxiety. Yeah. I'd like to share a simple Qigong practice to calm your mind and create a positive feeling toward your body. It's something that you can do right now if it's safe to do so. I invite you to uh, stop this episode if you need to, to get settled. You're just going to need a a small space where you can stand. And then uh, as soon as you're ready, you can press play again. I invite you to stand with your feet about a shoulder's width apart. And then I'd like you to bounce on your heels for a few moments and shake your arms out. Just shake out the tension. And don't worry about this being perfect or having to be exact. It's not necessary. We just want you to start getting a little bit loose in your body. Drop your shoulders and soften your face with a with a very relaxed smile, or what I call the Buddha grin. (laughs) And then, as you breathe in, imagine you're inhaling energy through every part of your skin and drawing it to collect in your lower belly. And if you want, you can put your hands right on your belly while you're breathing, inhaling, and just being really mindful of everything that you're taking in through your skin into your lower belly. And then as you exhale, imagine any stress, anxiety, or pain, anything that you don't feel good about shooting out of your skin like smoke and just watching it drift far away. It's leaving you. It's leaving your body. Keep breathing, inhaling, exhaling. Check your shoulders. Make sure that they're not up around your ears again. Face is soft. Eyes are soft. Keep breathing. And just check in with yourself. Can you relax anymore? And if you can, repeat the process. Shake it out and keep breathing and really inviting healing energy in and exhaling any stress, any anxiety, any pain, any discomfort, allowing that to leave your body and to float away, drifting far, far away. It's such a simple practice, and yet it might become your very favorite because it really, really works. Lovely to do that in nature. Anytime you get to go out for a walk, stand under a tree, stand near water, you can do it quite discreetly without really anybody knowing what you're doing so just to get out in that under the sky and in the fresh air try it daily it's really helpful and to wrap this week's episode let's talk a little bit about tapping because tapping is such a wonderful tool and can also help with health anxiety very very quickly yeah just a couple of tapping points here that can really help so if your anxiety is coming up fast and you're really feeling that fear about some symptom or sensation in your body. As we discussed last week, go to the collarbone points, those K27 tapping points. You can find them on our website. 
at anxietyslayer.com forward slash EFT. You'll find them in the tapping diagram there. And just tapping. Bunch your fingertips together. You can tap both sides of your chest, just under the collarbone where it meets the breastbone. Tapping and just voicing, even though I'm really worried about this, whatever it is you're feeling in your body, just to release that heightened anxiety. And if you're really feeling quite fearful, you could do this before the practice that Shan just shared, and then you'll, you'll enjoy the practice all the more. Acknowledging that you feel triggered, something's got you worried, tapping on those K27 points. And another point that's really nice is the top of the head point. Chinese medicine, this is used a lot. And in Ayurveda, this point is called Adipati, which means Lord of all. A very significant energy point. So just cupping your hand and patting with a cup hand gently right in the middle of the top of your head. And that can help clear your mind and relieve anxiety. It helps you feel quite grounded and present in your body. So two points to use when anxiety is running high, and then come to the other practices that we've shared. And remember to smile, because smiling changes your energy big time. So you can have a smile on your face while you're tapping, to relax your face, and focus on your outgoing breath. And every breath, let it be, or every exhale, I should say, let it be as long and smooth as you can possibly make it without straining. And it will just really drop you into a more relaxed state of mind. Ananga and I are celebrating 12 years of producing the Anxiety Slayer podcast with over 560 free episodes and a load of wonderful online courses to help you slay your anxiety. For the month of October, we're offering every course in the Anxiety Slayer Academy at half price. So head on over to anxietyslayer.teachable.com to explore the courses and see if any of them feel like a good fit for you. Thanks so much for listening.